but as a 2020 as a year of growth. And I hope that we leave 2020 having, having grown, not just in, in, in school and learning, but also some of these lessons that we've been discussing throughout this, these past few weeks. So 2020 has been good for people and has been bad for people. But today I want to close it out in talking about gratitude and thanksgiving because it's so appropriate as we start the week of thanksgiving. What does the Bible say when it comes to thanksgiving? And so we, we'll, I, I would like for you to go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. Primera de Thessalonicenses, capítulo 5, verso 18. Right? And I just have to say it in Spanish for myself because I don't even think I was pronouncing that in English. So listen, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18 says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So there's three things that I want to tell you today. If you're taking notes, I want you to write these down. And, and throughout this week and throughout the rest of this, this year, uh, hopefully uh, you, can, you can meditate in these words. You can meditate in God's words. And, and you can just uh, uh, apply it to your life. Number one. Giving thanks is good for you. Giving thanks is good for you. You know, we have learned that the word of God has given us nothing but good advice. Many times, if we find ourselves in a bad place, it's because we didn't take the advice that the word of God gave us. As, as, a, as a kid, I know that I wanted to, to do many things that my parents didn't allow me to do. And many times I wanted to, to touch fire and, and, and do many things that I didn't want. I remember one time my, my parents were backing up into a car and I put my foot underneath the tire and I wanted my parents to back into my foot. And I'm like, Dad, I can take it. I saw a kid do it uh, uh, somewhere and, and I can do it. My parents is like, no, I'm going to break your foot. You, don't, you have it too far in. You're, you're, you're in a bad place. And so sometimes we find ourselves... Not doing what the Bible says. And the Bible just wants us to be happy. The Bible wants us to, to live good lives. And, and, and so the, here we see that God commands us. And giving thanks is good for us. Gratitude improves your physical health. It is hard for you to be upset. It is hard for you to be sad. It is hard for you to be mad when you are grateful. Try it sometime. The other day, my wife and I, I can't remember what we were saying, and, and, and she, was, she was trying to, to prove a point and, and, I don't know, win an argument or something like that. And I grabbed her, and I brought her really close, and I hugged her, and I put, her, I put my arms around her, and she was literally like this close. And then I smiled, and I said, I love you, and thank you for, you know, for, I can't remember what I said. And then, and then I'm like, so what was that that you wanted to tell me? And then she just smiled, and she's like, I don't even know, right? Then she just wanted to kiss me, right? But it is, it is hard to be mad and upset and sad when you're grateful. It is good for our physical health. It, when pe people that are grateful people sleep better at night. Scientists have proven that. People that are grateful people sleep better at night. I don't know if you have heard this or not, but it's very, very popular amongst many podcasters and, and many YouTubers that say, hey, before you go to bed, take out your journal and five, write three to five things as to why you're grateful today. So if, you haven't, if you're having trouble sleeping, I urge you to get a journal, and every night before you go to bed, write three to five things as to why you're grateful today. And it's not that hard. We were coming up here, and I knew I was going to talk about this, and I told my family, we're a family of six, and I said, hey, three things why you're grateful today. Alessandra, you go first, right? And then we made it down to JJ, who's five years old, and he had three things he was grateful for. It's not that complicated to be grateful, and it, it's not too complicated to think about something. I'm grateful that I woke up this morning. I'm grateful that I had clothes to wear. I'm grateful that I can breathe. There's people that had COVID that can't fully breathe right now. I'm grateful for, for many things. Right now, you might be grateful that it's almost time for lunch, right? And, and I, I don't know. Maybe what, what are you grateful for today? But there are Plenty, plenty ways you, you could say, maybe you're just grateful if you're, if you're a kid and you're sitting here today, you're grateful that you don't go to school tomorrow. You're off, right, all week, yeah, right? And, and I hate it because they, you guys just want to watch TV late at night, and then we still have to get up early in the morning and go to work, right? But what are you grateful for today? Being grateful allows you to have better physical health. health. Grateful improves your psychological health. People who are, who, have, who are grateful, people who, who have gratitude, have increased mental strength. 
If you want to work out your, your, your mind, you want to have a stronger uh, 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 mental status, be a grateful person. Uh, gratefulness improves your self-esteem. If you're feeling low, if you've been depressed, if you've been dealing with things, if people have been talking about you or, or, or something's not going on and something's not going right, be grateful and your, your self-esteem is going to start to grow. You're not going to feel lonely. You're not going to feel depressed. You're not going to feel that you're not loved because your self-esteem is going to grow the more you are grateful. Gratitude enhances empathy and reduces aggression. If you know somebody that's really aggressive, they need to be more grateful. They're not grateful enough in, in their life. But it, it, gratefulness enhances empathy. You're able to feel what other people are feeling. You're able to, 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 to see what it's like to live in their shoes. And it reduces your aggression. Gratefulness opens doors to relationship. There's one thing that, that my wife and I pay close attention to. Close attention to. And, and any time... We, are, we get to share with a group of friends or we get to share, you know, just with, with, with people that are close to us and we have a praise report or we have something good to say or we have, you know, something that we're excited about. We always are careful to see how the other people react. Because if, if I'm telling you that I'm happy because I just bought a car, we're happy that we just bought a car, and this is amazing. It's got the top-of-the-line stuff, and, and we're so blessed to have this. And it's a 2021. I'm so happy. And then your response to me is, I bet your payments are super high. Well, you're not paying for them, right? If, if your reply back to me is like, well, you should have gotten it with, you know, you should have gotten it with a TV inside. If, if, if your reply back to us isn't like, that's awesome. I'm happy for you then maybe you shouldn't be in our inner circle. If, if you can't celebrate with us, if you just want to one-up us all the time, if, if you want to say, well, I wanted that car. I'm, I'm, I'm buying a car next month. Buy a car next month. I'm not going to pay your car. Just, can we just enjoy this? And I'll, and I'll celebrate with you, and I'll enjoy whatever's happening in, in your life, right? So, so we're, 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 we watch our friendships and people that are around us because we want to be able to celebrate other people. So we also try to watch what we're saying, right? We want to be able to celebrate other people and want other people to celebrate us because we want to be around grateful people. When, when you're around people that aren't grateful, you don't want to hang out with them too much. When you're around people that, that aren't thankful, it's, it's, it's hard to deal with. I remember being, and you guys, I'm sure you have lived this too, going to a party and going, and, and going to see kids open up presents and then they get clothes or they get something else and they're like, okay, next present. Um, I got you that. Can, you're welcome. Right? Have you guys been to those, to those parties where the kids just want to, they, they just want to open up presents and everything and they don't even want to say thank you? Because it's not, sometimes it, it's not natural. We're human. It's, it, it's not natural for us to maybe do that. We're, we're very self-centered. That's why we need to practice being thankful. That's why our parents would tell us, hey, say thank you. Say thank you because you're teaching your child to, to be grateful. And hopefully when, when your child gets older, when we get older, hopefully we're, we've developed that sense of gratefulness as well. All right? So well, we hate going to those parties and, and, and seeing that. So what we decided to do in my household is if you invite us to a kid's birthday party, we try as hard as we can to bring a toy. I'm like, I do not want to see the disappointment in this kid's face when he opens up a present and it's a jacket. What am I going to do with that? It's not even cold. Next, next present, right? But when he opens it up and it's a soccer ball, cool, right? You can see that their eyes and you can see them smile and then they go to the, the next present. But um, that's just us. Anyway, giving thanks is good for you. It's good for your mind. It's good for your soul. It's good for your health. Number two, giving thanks. Give thanks in all circumstances, and it's important for us to really read this text correctly. Give thanks in all circumstances. Meaning, this verse doesn't say, give thanks for all circumstances. It doesn't say that I need to be thankful to be unemployed. I'm thankful that I'm unemployed. I'm thankful that I'm sick. I'm thankful that I lost a loved one. I'm thankful that I'm failing a class. I'm thankful that I made a mistake. It doesn't say, it doesn't say for it says, in 
all circumstances. So this is what needs to happen. Even though I'm unemployed, I'm thankful. Even though I am sick, I'm thankful. Because even though I am blessed, if even, even though I'm employed, I'm thankful. If I'm not employed, I'm thankful in every single circumstance. All my family is alive and well, be thankful. You lost a love member, be thankful in all circumstances. No matter what you are doing, where the walk of life, what, what chapter of your life you're at, in all circumstances, we are called to be thankful. Psalm 100, verse 4 through 5 says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise him, for the Lord is good and his love, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through generations. You see, the Lord is good. The Lord is faithful. He's already done more than enough, and we just need to be thankful. So whether I have a job or I don't have a job, in that circumstance, I am to be thankful. I was reminded of the fact that, you know, Jesus, uh, Jesus when, when he was alive and uh, uh, walking on earth, and, and uh, ten, ten lepers came close by, and they yelled at him, and they wanted, to, they, they wanted to be healed because they had been shunned from their city. And so Jesus says, hey, go and present yourselves to the, to the, uh, to the priest." Go and present yourself to the priest. And the Bible says that while they, all ten of them were walking to present themselves to the priest, they were healed. And so one of them came back to say thank you. And what did Jesus say? Where are the other nine? Many of us have made the mistake. Many of us have been so blessed that we forget to come back and say thank you. We are enjoying our blessing and we forget to come back and say, thank you. Lord, remember when, when I didn't have anything, not now I do, I, I'm, I'm thankful. But many of us are so busy enjoying the blessings. I, I, I do have a job, and I, and I do have health, and I do have everything. But would Jesus, would Jesus be telling, telling, talking about us when he said, where are the other nine that didn't come back and say, thank you? Or would we be the one that did come back and say, thank you? See, it's, it's easy to, to, to be in a circumstance of health, in a circumstance of goodness, of blessings, of everything is going right, and not be thankful. But the same is valid on the other way. If you're in a circumstance of something wrong, your project didn't go out the way you wanted. Maybe you lost a job. Maybe you're sick. Maybe you lost a loved one. Maybe you're in a circumstance that doesn't, you, you feel like it's hard for you to even dig up for something as to why you're grateful and thankful. But the Bible says, in all circumstances. Can you turn to the person next to you and say, in all circumstances, give thanks. In all circumstances, give thanks. Psalms 106, verse 1 says, praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good and his love endures forever. Our God is good, and his love endures forever. He loves you no matter what you're going through, no matter what 2020 has brought. You are loved. And because you are loved, then we should be thankful. Because you are loved, then we should give thankfulness. The third point I want you to write down is giving thanks is God's will. Giving thanks is God's will. Our key Bible verse says, give thanks in all circumstances for God, for, for this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. Does God know that you are thankful and grateful today? Does he know that you are thankful for today? Have you spent any time talking to God when you woke up this morning and said, Lord, thank you for another day. Lord, thank you for my children. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to be able to, to come to church today. One of, the, one of my, my children said, I'm thankful that today is the Lord's Day. He was thankful to come to church and, and, and enjoy Sunday. Have, have we said thanks to, to God today? Have you spent time talking to God? Have you spent time praying to God? doesn't have to be anything crazy. You don't have to even close your eyes to be thankful to God. You can have your eyes open. You can have a conversation. You can look in the heavens or whatever you want to do and say, God, thank you for today. 
I thank you that I have help. Thank you that, that, that my parents take care of me. Thank you that our refrigerator is full. Thank you for cold milk, right? Thank you for toilet paper. Nine months ago, we, we were struggling to find toilet paper. Right now, we have a ton of toilet paper. Thank you. You could be thankful for almost anything. But does God know that you're thankful? Does God know that you're thankful? Or are you just kind of, I'm, I'm thankful at heart. I'm, I'm a gracious person. I, I practice gratitude. It's just that God doesn't know it. I, in my mind, I am grateful. God needs to know that you are grateful through prayer. Pray through conversation. Talk to God through worship. Worship God and, and, and say thank you as, as you're worshiping. There's so many songs that talk about thank you. I, I almost made the, the worship band come up here and sing, para darte las gracias. And then I'm like, that's not an, an English song, but, you know, we could, we could say just to give you thanks. To give you thanks. Whether you can worship and through worship give thanks to God. You can journal and every night as, as you're thinking about these things, write a letter to God and say, God, today I am thankful for these three things. I am thankful for these five things. Lord, I'm thankful that I, I paid my light bill today. See, many, many, of us, many of us see things differently because maybe, maybe you can look at a pile of dirty clothes and you, instead of being upset that you have to wash it, you could say, God, I'm grateful that my children and, and myself and my husband or my wife, we have lots of clothes to wear. I'm grateful that I don't even have to go wash it the, to the wash I can wash it here. Maybe when you're paying your light bill, instead of complaining that the light bill's too high, you can say, Lord, I'm grateful that we were able to have uh, air conditioning during the summer. Lord, I'm grateful that we're able to have heat during the, during the cold nights, I'm grateful for that. Lord, I, what, what, what are some of the things that we often complain about, and how can we turn that around and be grateful to God about? So put it in your notes on your phone, or put it on a journal, or, or just speak it to God and pray it to God, but make sure God knows that you are grateful. Make sure that you are thanking Him every day, for his love and mercy every day. Show gratitude and thankfulness to others. I challenge you, not just this week, but I challenge you that you often do it, that you do it as often as you can every day, that, that is part of a lifestyle. I believe that what's one of our core values here at church, it needs to be that we need to be grateful people and thankful people. So you need to show it. Show it to, to a loved one. Show it to your, your, your brothers or sisters or your parents or your grandparents show it to your husband or your wife how can you show it to them call them call them on the phone text them write them a letter send them an email if you're able and have them close to them give them a hug and let them hear it come out of your words i'm so thankful for you i'm so happy for you i'm i'm so grateful that you're part of our life tell your brothers your sisters your husband your parents your 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 Whoever's close, your friends, your coworkers, let them know that you're grateful as well. And, and not just that we think. Many times we, we are grateful for people, but we often don't say it. We could have sent a quick text. Man, I should have thanked them for that. I'll get it next time. If we don't actually do it, are we really grateful? If the other person doesn't know that, that we were grateful, then were we really grateful? Hey, man, I meant to thank you for that. Well, you had a chance? You can say it now even. Show, show it to your loved ones. Show it to strangers. When was the last time you did something for a stranger? Were you able to, to make a difference and come and get some of the, the meal boxes that we had and go give it away to somebody? Have you been able to, to help a stranger that's sitting on the, on the side of the freeway? We were, uh, we were looking at somebody yesterday that had a, a, a cup because they were asking for money and then had a stick on it. And my wife said, man, even, even the people that are asking for money in the, in, in the side of the freeway have had to adjust to COVID because they can't come to your window anymore, right? So they, they have a cup on a stick so they can just put it close to your window and they don't have to be in your face. When was the last time you showed love to a stranger? When was the last time you helped somebody? 
When was the last time you were grateful to just a, a stranger that opened the door? Thank you. Thank you for opening the door. Maybe you might be going to a store. Or you might be going somewhere. They opened the door. When was the last time you said thank you? If you said thank you, then, then you know inside you have a grateful, you have a, a grateful heart. You have a, guard, a heart of thanksgiving. But, it, but if you just come in and you're expecting, well, people should open doors for me. Maybe you don't have a thankful heart. You don't have a gratitude inside of you. Show thankfulness to strangers. And most of all, make it a lifestyle. Make it a lifestyle. See, God's, God's will is for us to give thanks in all circumstances. But for that to happen, we actually have to do it. And we have to do it a second time. And we have to do it a third time. And we have to do it when things are good. And we have to do it when things are okay. And we have to do it when things are bad. As you begin to build these habits, the habit of gratitude, the habit of thankfulness, the habit of letting your loved ones know, letting people close to you know, letting even strangers know that you are thankful and grateful, you make it into a lifestyle. And we continue to, to talk about this all throughout quarantine. We've talked about this because one of our key Bible verses was Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 through 7. And it says, do not be anxious about anything. Do not be anxious about anything. 2020 has made us, has given us many reasons to be anxious. Who is going to win? Who is going to win the presidency? There's, peop, there's many people anxious about that. Did it get certified? Did it not? Were there votes that came in overnight? Did they not? Many people are anxious about the economy. Are we going to rebound? Are we not going to rebound? Is it, is, are we going to be able to, to trade with Mexico or trade with China? Are we going to control this COVID? Is the vaccine real? Is it not real? Are they tracking me with the vaccine? Is, uh, is this a 666? There's so many things to be anxious about this year. But the Bible says, the Word of God tells us, do not be anxious about anything but in every situation, in every circumstance, in everything that you might be dealing with, whether it's, it's school whether it's work, whether it's things at home. It says in every single situation, whether it's good or bad or just in between, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present them to God. So don't just come and say, God, I need a job. That's not how I read this Bible verse. That's not how I read God's word. It doesn't say, God, I need help with my, with my marriage. God, I need help. You know, and I need, I, need, I need help with my emotions. God, I need, I need help. It does not say bring your petitions. It says bring your petitions, but with thanksgiving. So be thankful as you're bringing the, the, the petitions. Lord, I, I, I'm here to ask for a job. Lord, I, I need a job. My family needs, needs, needs financial support. I've been without a job for a while. Unemployment's going to run out. God, and, and, and I bring this petition to you, but I thank you. That so far, you have provided for me. Lord, I thank you that so far, you have kept my stress level low. Even though there were days that I wanted to, to cry and curl up and, 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 and act like a little kid, you, you were with me. Lord, thank you that we have not missed a meal. Lord, but now I ask that you help me find a job. Help me find a job that allows me to come to church. Help me find a job that allows me to provide for my family. Help me find a, a job that, whatever it may be, whatever your petition is. Maybe you're asking for help. Lord, I, I'm sick and, 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 and I haven't been feeling well. Lord, and, and I would like for, for your healness, but in, in the meantime, I, I want to thank you for today. I was able to still go to work even though I was sick. I was able to, to still eat even though I didn't feel good. Lord, I was able to to what, whatever it may be, whatever you're thankful for. Find things to be thankful for. Don't just bring petitions to God. Don't just bring give me, give me, give me. Don't just sit there like a little kid opening presents. God, I want this and I want that and move it over. And now I want this, Lord. And, and, and then in the new year, I want a better body. And I want this and I want a better job and I want a raise. And Lord, I want a new house. And Lord, I want a new car. And I want and I want. It says... Bring your requests, bring your petitions to God, but bring them with thanksgiving. Then present them to God. Present them with thanksgiving. How many of you in 2020 have presented so many petitions and so many requests without any thanksgiving? A 
Colossians 4 verse 2 says, Devote yourself to pray, being watchful and thankful. I'm glad I said it that way. Because we do need to pay attention. Because we do need to watch, wa- be watchful. Because we have to watch ourselves. One time, not too long ago, we were sitting with some friends of ours. And my wife made an observation. And then she pointed it out to me. She was my watch, my watch woman. She's good at watching things that I do wrong. Wives are good for that, huh? So she came up to me and she said, hey, so-and-so told us this. And that was an opportunity for us to be like, oh, that's awesome. And you kind of dismissed it. And, and you, you continued talking about something else. And, and I'm glad she saw that and, and she pointed it out because we need to be watchful. We're not perfect people. We make mistakes. And many times we can leave here today and say, hey, we're going to be grateful. Thanksgiving week, every day, we're going to be thankful. We're thankful for this. We're grateful for that. I'm going to say it. I'm going to write an email. I'm going to write a text. Maybe I'm not going to do it on Sunday because they might have seen, they might be in the same room. And they're going to they're gonna think that the, that the preacher asked me to do it, and that's why I'm doing it. Sometimes we overthink things, right? Just do it. Just, just be grateful and do it. But listen, we are called to live this lifestyle, and we need somebody to help us be accountable. So as parents, we need to help our children because our, it's not natural for our children to say thank you and please and yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am, and yes, sir, and no, sir. And, and it's just they're kids. They don't know any better. And, and so they, we need to tell them, hey, be grateful. Say thank you. Give them a hug. Say bye. They're your uncle. You got to love them. They're your, they're your aunt or they're our friends or don't, don't be rude. Don't be ugly. Smile, whatever it may be, right? Don't you gum at church. We, we teach them so many things, right? But when, we, but when we're grown... When we're adults, who's watching out for you? We need to be watching out for you, but there's, sometimes we have a blind spot. So who are your friends and who are your people that are close to you that can keep you accountable for you to have a thankful heart, a grateful attitude, a grateful lifestyle? So I challenge you today to be thankful, to be grateful, but to also watch yourself and have somebody else watch over you. Have somebody else point it out because I want to be a grateful person, and I'm telling you, within the last month, this happened. My wife came up to me and said, hey, you messed up. What did I do? And she told me, and I'm like, oh, yeah, man, that sucks. Did I really say that? At first, I'm like, no, you, you, you misread the whole situation. No, this is what happened. I'm, Are you sure? Yeah, she was sure. So then the next time I said, hey, I meant to tell you, thank you for that. I'm sorry I didn't, you know, I'm sorry if I didn't say it, I apologize. But, man, uh, uh, that is so cool. I'm so happy for you. I'm happy for you. Great, whatever it was. You know, I, 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 I try to fix it. But sometimes we need to catch ourselves or we need to have other people catch us because we do want to be grateful, because we do want to be thankful. Because that's God's will for us. Can I get an amen? So can you please stand up? In this time of quarantine, one of the lessons I believe is that we are to be grateful in our, all circumstances. Did you start a business? Be grateful. Did you lose a job? Be grateful. Don't be grateful because you lost a job, but find things to be grateful while you are unemployed. If somebody got sick, you lost a loved one, you may not be grateful for that. But in that midst of hurt, be grateful to God. So guys, I I, I challenge you, as we go into this whole Thanksgiving week, start a journal, have an accountability partner. Start it this week, but let's keep it going. We need to be more thankful people and more grateful people. If there's anything I've learned in these past few months is that I have not needed anything i have not suffered i have not the world didn't end we have not missed a meal if anything we gained weight god has been faithful god has been good during this whole time and that is more than enough reason for us to be thankful amen so let's pray right where you are and i want you to thank god just for a few minutes 
So I'm going to pray over you, but you find things to be thankful today. And, and if you have a petition, bring it with, with thanksgiving right now. And, and so let, let's pray. God, thank you for this opportunity to, to come to your house today and learn, learn that we know that we know that we know that we should be thankful in all circumstances. Lord, there are many different people in this place. And there's going to be people that are going to be watching online. Some are having a blessed life. Some of them are struggling. Lord Job in the Bible, he, he had plenty of reasons to just curse you. Job had plenty of reasons to be mad at you. He lost his wealth. He lost his status. He, his own wife turned against him. His children passed away. Lord, he had more than enough reasons to be upset and not be thankful. But in that circumstance of him being ill in his own body, of him mourning the lives of his, of his, of his kids, of him hearing his wife complain, of his friends just watching him suffer in that time he still did not leave you did not leave there lord with with an angry heart at you in that circumstance that the most terrible circumstance he didn't curse you and lord no matter what our circumstances may be whether we are blessed whether we are struggling, whether things are good, maybe we are still stressed, maybe we're still fearful of what may come. Lord, whatever the circumstance each person is, the young kids, the, the, the youth, the adults, no matter what our circumstance, no matter what chapter in our lives we are in, may we be grateful. May be, we be thankful, Lord, and even in, the, in our needs, even in our petitions, that we are grateful because that is when you listen to us, Lord. So there are needs in this house. There's people that, that need their job. There's people that need healing. There's people that, that need a peace. Lord, I ask that you could help us find gratitude in the midst of our petitions requests because there's so much to be grateful. We're grateful that your love endures forever. We're grateful that you're a God almighty. And we're grateful that you are victorious. And at the end of this whole thing, you, you win. Lord, we're grateful that we're on the winning side. We're grateful that you gave your son, your one and only uh, son, to, to die for me and to, to pay for all my sins. Lord, we're grateful that you're preparing a place in heaven for us. Lord, we're grateful in, for so many things. And in that spirit of gratefulness, Lord, we, that we also bring our requests and our petitions. Lord, I ask that you restore families. I ask that you restore uh, marriages. I ask, Lord, that, that you help kids that are struggling with, with their school. I, I hope that, Lord, I ask that, that you help young people who might be struggling with, with depression or might be struggling with, with their emotions or different thoughts, Lord. I, I bring these petitions to you. Lord, there might be people that are struggling with, with their economy. Lord, we ask for jobs. We ask for businesses. We ask for, for your provision in a mighty way. Whatever the petition is, we bring it to you, Lord, with a thankful heart. In Jesus' name.